In this video, I want to discuss the concept of dimension, what this term dimension means, and how I'm going to use this word dimension for the rest of this course. So when you think about the word dimension, possibly different definitions or different ideas come to mind. Maybe you think about some kind of science fiction dimension, like an alternate reality where people get to travel to and it's like a different version of you and there's slightly different things that are happening. Or maybe you think about dimension as a kind of semantic or definitional sense. So if you were talking to someone about some topic and then you learn a new piece of information that makes you reinterpret something you already knew, then you could say that that new piece of information adds a whole new dimension to your idea about this topic. So that's all fine. Those are all valid definitions of the word dimension. There's another definition of the word dimension that's more often used in mathematics, and in particular in geometry. And that's something like this. So you can think of a zero-dimensional space as just being a point. One dimension gives us a line. Two dimension is a plane. Three dimension is a cube. And so on. You can conceptualize four dimensions in one of two ways. One, you can think about a three-dimensional object, like a cube, traveling over time. So then time is the fourth dimension. Or you can think about the fourth dimension being represented by a color. So if there were colors in all around this cube, then the color would correspond to the fourth dimension. This concept of dimension turns out to be really useful in linear algebra, and I'm going to call on this dimension several times in this course. But because this is a very practical-oriented course, because I'm focused on dimension reduction and source separation in neuroscience data in measured signals, the concept of dimension that I will use most often is that a dimension in a data set corresponds to each measurement item. So that can be a channel or a sensor or a voxel or a pixel if it's some kind of imaging technique. Or maybe it's a neuron if you're doing single neuron recordings. Just in general, one channel, one piece of information that you get. So what I'm doing here is depicting a two-dimensional data set. You can imagine that this is EEG, and I measured EEG from two channels. So these are the data corresponding to channel 1, and the data, so the microvolt value, microvolt value for channel 2. And that means that each point here would be a time point. So we measured data at this time point, and the microvolt value at this time point was you know, minus one half on electrode one and plus 1.2 on electrode two. So here you go, this is our two dimensional data set. This is one way of illustrating the data. You could also illustrate data as a line and then you can think about the data set as being like a trajectory or the time course of the data as being a trajectory through this space. So in this case, I'm representing a three-channel data set or a three-dimensional data set and now this line shows the activity that we measure over time so it's pretty neat to look at it and just to think about data in this way so you have this huge three-dimensional space where there could in theory be activity and yet for whatever reason the activity that we measured in this time window is restricted to this very specific little trajectory here this kind of approach is sometimes also called state space analysis. And you'll learn more later in this course about how to use things like principal components or eigenvectors to create a state space representation of the data. It's also interesting to have a look at the data like this. You can see features that you would see sometimes in, when you're looking at the time series from only one channel is actually just the projection of this trajectory onto that dimension. So if you look at this wiggly line, this looks kind of funny, but if you were looking only at channel 1's activity and ignoring channel 2 and channel 3, what you would see here is an oscillation. This is going up and down relative to channel 1. But when you look at this, this the oscillation gives a slightly different interpretation, and it looks more like a, like a, a kind of chaotic spiral. It's kind of spiraling down here. Anyway, the take-home message from this video is that Although there are several different definitions and uses of the term dimension for signal processing and in particular for dimension reduction and source separation, 
the term dimension is most often used to indicate each measurement point in the data.